Hi there and welcome to our first introductory video on cells. Our body is a really complex organism and it is important we understand how our body functions. So let's get started. First of all, what is a cell? The smallest living thing in our body are cells. These cells then build up to form the human organism. This is the definition of a cell and it's important that you memorize this. It could come up in exams. A cell is the smallest functional unit that together with other cells make up an organism. Cells can be divided into two categories which are eukaryotes and prokaryotes. And we'll have a look at these more closer later on in this video. In a eukaryotic cell, you can get plant cells, animal cells, and fungi cells. And in prokaryotes, you can get bacteria cells and archaea cells. And we're going to have a closer look at these. In this video, uh, we're going to look at plant cells and animal cells. And in our next video, we're going to have a look at fungi cells, bacteria cells, and archaea cells. So approximately, there are around 37 trillion cells in our body. And in cells, there are organelles, and these are the components of the cell. As you can see, 37 trillion is a really big number, and that's how many cells there are in our body approximately. So first of all, there are two categories of cells, eukaryotes and prokaryotes. Let's start by having a look at eukaryotes. This is an organism which includes cells that have a DNA contained as chromosomes in a distinct nucleus. For now, you just need to learn that the key difference between eukaryotes and prokaryotes is that the DNA is held as chromosomes in a distinct nucleus. So the DNA is held inside the nucleus. A distinct nucleus is where all the DNA is found and is not mixed with any other part of the cell. Some examples are plant cells and animal cells and fungi cells. So that's one of the key points you need to learn for eukaryotes. They contain a double bounded membrane in organelles. So remember an organelle um, are components of the cell, they make up the cell. So a double bounded membrane all this means uh, is a two layer membrane. So if I draw it out over here, this is the membrane and it's just a double layer membrane over here. Uh, it's a two layered membrane, the inner membrane and the outer membrane. So this over here is the inner membrane and this out here is the outer membrane. So all this does, it's, it makes it easier for the organelles to decide what comes in and what goes out. So that's the main job of a membrane. Uh, it's to decide what comes in and what goes out. So moving on to prokaryotes. Some of the cells that are included in this category are bacteria and archaea. So if we're talking about prokaryotes, uh, they're the main types of cells that are included. These were the first form of life on Earth. So before animal cells and plant cells were investigated, bacteria and archaea cells were the first ones um, that were formed on Earth, that were found out. So prokaryotes have no membrane-bound organelles. Uh, they have no nucleus and the DNA is just floating in the cytoplasm. So a key difference there, in eukaryotes, the DNA is held in the nucleus but in prokaryotes the DNA is just left um, floating around in the cytoplasm there's no nucleus and, and prokaryotes have new no membrane bound organelles eukaryotes have um, 80 s ribosomes and prokaryotes have 70 s um, ribosomes that's one of the key differences as well um, and all this um, 80s and 70s means is just the form that ribosomes are found in so in eukaryotes they're found in the 80s form and in prokaryotes they're found in the 70s um, form
And that's a key difference between eukaryotes and prokaryotes as well. So moving on to animal cells. Animals are eukaryote, um, animal cells, I should say, are eukaryotes, which means their genetic information is enclosed in the nucleus. Some organelles, which animal cells include, are a nucleus. So a nucleus um, controls the cell's activity. Uh, a cytoplasm is where all the organelles are held in. Uh, they're floating around in the cytoplasm. Uh, the cell membrane which controls what comes in and what goes out and the mitochondria where respiration occurs uh, ribosomes where protein synthesis occurs so these are the organelles in animal cells but the mitochondria and the ribosomes they're really small to see with the light microscope so we normally use light microscopes in a school uh, to see uh, a detailed image of a cell. But via, like for some reason, cytoplasm and cell membrane and the nucleus are easy to see with a light microscope. You can see them clearly. But with a light microscope, you can't see the mitochondria and ribosomes because they are that small. They are really small. And to see these two organelles in detail, you, need, you will need to use an electron microscope. So plant cells. Unlike animal cells, plant cells use light to carry out photosynthesis. So photosynthesis is something that plant cells do and we'll have a look at that uh, in a later video. Plant cells have a regular shape, so their shape doesn't change. And they also have three additional organelles. So the organelles we've looked at here they have all of these organelles, but they also have three extra ones. And those are chloroplasts. This is where uh, chlorophyll is contained and it's an important component uh, for photosynthesis. Uh, the cell wall keeps the cell turgid. It uh, gives the cell its shape. And the vacuole, this is where, um, what contains the cell sap of the cell. Okay, so that is it for this video. Um, thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. And one last thing, uh, please subscribe and hit the like button.